Um, so thank you guys for being here. Today we're talking about um, Page Builder on Moxie. Now Page Builder is a feature within uh, Moxie that, you know, it basically is kind of like a 201. And the way that I've kind of described it to people is that up until we had Moxie, uh, you kind of had two options in terms of a website as an agent. You could have one of our, oh, sorry, my chair's not scooting. You could have one of our company profiles, which would be uh, coldwellbanker.com, which is Zap. Or you could have your CB Great Lakes, CB Florida Home, CB Schmidt, Ohio website. Now, those were great because they were hooked up to our MLS searches and they were free. Um, but the downside that a lot of people had with them is that they just weren't very customizable. They weren't very editable. You can only do so many things in so many places. The other option at that time was go ahead and you know buy a website, build your own site through a web developer, through a platform, going in and doing it yourself. Um, the downside to that, of course, is that to, in order to do it well, it was very expensive because any good real estate site, whether it's for a brokerage, an agent, a team, should have a search right there, right? That's one of the first things you should see is a search bar. And in order to get that search bar, you to get an IDX feed, it can cost anywhere from like, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month to a few hundred dollars a month just to have that search bar function, let alone to host your site, let alone to um, have someone build it out if you're not building it out. So... Um, so those were kind of your two options. They both had pros and cons. Now that we're on Moxie, one of the things I love about it is that this page builder feature allows you to essentially build your own website, make your site look um, as customized as you want. You can literally, this is what we're going to get into, build it module by module. You can base it off of the template and switch things around, but you have so much creative freedom that there's no reason to go, uh, in my personal opinion, to go to an outside company because you can build that here. So this webinar is meant as a sort of how to in terms of um, how to build a page out kind of to get to know the page builder tool. Um, I will say from the get go um, that if you've never done something like this before, it's definitely gonna take a second to get used to it, right? To kind of figure out what does what, what goes where. That's what this webinar is here to help you do. Um, and as, as much as it can be, I do think it is very, very, um, I don't wanna say easy to use, but very user friendly and gets easier as long as you put in the time to, to try it out. So um, I don't necessarily think this is something you should follow along right now. I think this is something you should watch, see what I do. You'll see as we go that you're gonna to have to have some stuff prepared, uh, photos, maybe any videos you want. Uh, so follow along. If you guys have questions in the chat, uh, have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to get going. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen now. If you can't, just shoot me a note. So all I, the only place that thing I've done right now is I've logged in. Okay, so right now I'm just at my.schmidtresources.com. I logged in with my username and my password and this is where I am. Now, before we go into the page builder, I want to show you the, the standard homepage. So this jd-waldvogel.cbgreatlakes.com, this is sort of the homepage that Moxie has predetermined. This is kind of like their template. If you're an agent who doesn't want to worry about all this page builder stuff, you just want a nice page, this is what uh, they have for you. So I've got the search right here. I've got my information and a little bio about me. Um, if you've been in my trainings before, you have heard me talk about how to build this and we'll kind of show you that in a second. Got some featured properties here. Um, I have a custom search that I can add. For my example, I have a Holland Luxury Home search here. Uh, and then I've, I've got a blog that I created and I've got uh, my number one hit single, Who Knows? It's available on Spotify and iTunes, check it out. Um, and then I've got the sample mortgage rates that they have kind of um, pre-built in. So this is sort of the template that they have for your site. There are some customizable things um, here or there, but it's pretty um, formulaic. I think as far as templated pages go, this is great. Like I said, I've got the search right at the top. I've got my bio right there. Um, I can still add custom pages up here, which I've talked about in trainings before. But in terms of a quote unquote template, I've got a pretty nice page here. So uh, again, this page builder thing that I'm gonna show you is a lot of fun, I think, and really nice, but don't feel like um, it's the only option because this template is a great option too. So now we're just going to go back, whoops, we're going to go back to the my.schmidtresources.com page here. And across this top bar, you'll see this blue, we've got home, present, engage, and then my website. This is what we're going to do. We're going to click on my website. 
just so you guys know, just so I like to give other options, uh, you can also get there from going to your profile in the upper right corner here. See my little headshot? Click on that. And we also have an option down here for website. Either of these buttons is going to take you to the exact same place. They're just uh, multiple options. So I'm going to click my website. And it's going to bring me to the back end of Moxie, the WordPress back end section. So um, if you've done any of my trainings before, you'll recognize these common tasks, which is a huge part. You know, if you haven't gone into this before, if you haven't messed with your site, these common tasks are huge. For example, the second one here, personalize your homepage. If we click that go, go there button, this is going to take us to the editing part where we can edit the back end of the, of the page we were looking at earlier. So this page right here is what I would be editing right here. This is the templated um, background for for uh, for your page. So hey, I can change my photo right here. I can change my title right here. My information, my bio. You can do all of that from here for the templated page. Okay. Now what we're going to talk about is how to create a custom page. Not 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 just how to create it, but where to find them. And where to find them, of course, is the most important part in order to get going. You need to know how to get there. So we're going to look at this left hand bar over here. Uh, right now you see home pages highlighted, but we're going to click here for site pages right underneath. Now we could just click add new right there. It would take us again to the same place, but I do want us to click on site pages on the tab itself. And excuse me, we're going to let that load. So this is all the pages I have on my page. Again, we've gone into that in other training, so I'm not going to dive into this the moment. What we're looking for right now is this button right across the top add new you see it says all pages what's this don't worry about that and then it says add new we're going to click add new and then we're going to click where it says custom page let me get the chat up quick um uh let's talk about that in a little bit alessandra because we're not quite there yet um so we're going to click where it says uh add new you'll see it defaults to custom pages which is exactly what we want and then we're going to click um submit so this is going to bring us to creating a custom page. Now, first two steps. Step number one is clicking on uh, adding a title. Now, you can go back and change this later. You, this is not something that is set in stone. I'm just going to do training page one. That's step one. Step two, do you see right here where it says text editor? Right next to that, it says page builder. Page Builder is what we want to press. We're going to click Page Builder. It's going to ask us to leave the site. You're going to click Leave, or you know, Yes, depending on what program you're using. And then it's going to launch the Page Builder program. It's still going to be editing the same page. We're still working on the exact same thing. It's just bringing us to a more user-friendly um, uh, kind of uh, editing platform, if you will. So this here is my new page. As you can tell, it is blank. <laughs> it literally says drop a row layout or module to get started. From here, this is where we're going to be able to create any sort of page that we want. Now, we can create it exactly from scratch like this, or Moxie has a bunch of templates that we can go off of that we can uh, start with and then uh, kind of drop in our own information. Uh, this bar right here. I'm going to see if I can move it, move it a bit. This bar is sort of going to be the key to everything we do. This is where we're going to pick what content we want to add. This is where we're going to pick a template we want to use. This bar over here is going to kind of be our guide. Okay. So what's nice about this page builder is that just about everything is drag and drop. If I want to add a photo, do you see where it says photo? I'm going to drag it. And then I'm going to drop it right there and boom, now I'm going to be able to add a photo. So I'm not actually going to do that right now because I just wanted to show you guys how everything is uh, drag and drop. Just so you know, by the way, if that bar, you see how it's gone? Uh oh, I need my bar. Upper right corner, there's this plus sign right here. Upper right corner, I click that plus, it's going to give me the bar. Now, like I said, you could literally drag and drop piece by piece of information to create your own custom page. While quite easy, because like you said, you could do a heading, you could do a photo, you could do some text, you could do a gallery, just boom, 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 boom. While that is easy, it doesn't oftentimes look as good 
um, as another site could. <laughs> that's a that's a nice Dr. Seuss rhyme I got right there. Would, would look as good as another site could. Um, so what we're going to start with, instead of just starting to drop modules, is we're going to look up here along this bar, and we're going to go to where it says templates. This is the third option out of four. Modules, rows, templates, and then save. We're going to click on templates. This is where we can take a uh, template and start editing our own information. Moxie has a bunch, that's a cool warning to get, your internet connection is unstable. Um, Moxie has a bunch of options that we can go off of that they have pre-built for real estate, which I would recommend kind of picking one of these. However, if you go up to the bar where it says Moxie works templates, you have a few other options, landing pages and content pages. I can click one of these and there are gonna be a bunch more, uh, a bunch of more options for you to use for your pages. However, these pages are not geared toward real estate. If you look at this Motor City one, for example, you can tell there's a lot of car-based, motorcycle-based stuff here. That's okay. It's just going to require more um, editing from your end because you're going to have to replace a lot more information. But if you like any of these templates, there's nothing stopping you from using any of these templates. Now, before we pick a template, there's one question I want us to ask ourselves. It's the same question I want us to ask ourselves before we do a Facebook ad, before we do any sort of advertising. And that question is, what is the purpose of what I'm trying to build? If you're creating a custom page, what is the purpose of that custom page? Do you want it to be your new homepage where people go to jdsellshomes.com and that's where it brings them? Do you want this to be a landing page for a specific property? Do you want this to be an about page uh, so that people can get to know you or your team? Um, do you want to show off marketing collateral? What your goal is will help determine the best format for that page. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So what we're going to work on right now is we're just going to work on building a new home page. So sort of taking this one right here, remember this is that templated page, taking this and doing a different version of it, one that I might maybe like a bit more, want to customize a little bit more. So what we're going to do then, if that's my goal, what did I say earlier, and this is rhetorical, don't worry about answering, uh, what did I say earlier was one of the most important things about having uh, your homepage for a real estate? It's this search bar. If someone goes to your page, yes, of course, it's important that they hear about you, that they see your information, but it's also very, very important that they can search for properties. If I go to a real estate website, whether it's for a brokerage or an agent, I expect to be able to search for real estate. So with that in mind, that is the sort of template I'm going to look for. I know that I want to do a new homepage and I know that I want a search bar. So right up here, I'm going to go from this landing pages. I'm going to go back to the Moxie Works templates, and I'm going to look for a template that has a search bar. And of course, because they are real estate based, the first, I mean, literally two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, the first 13 options are all um, based off of having that search bar. So I'm going to click on, uh, I'm going to click on some of them just to get an example. The first one I clicked on is called Cashmere. I don't know why it's called cashmere, but it's called cashmere. Now, uh, my internet connection is not as good here as it is at the office, so uh, it is going to take a little bit to load, but you can see, as soon as I clicked that button, boom, all of this stuff started to fill in. All of the stuff from that template is here. This, of course, this front section is the one that's having a little bit of trouble loading, um, but if you don't like this template, you go, okay, let's take a look at it. Oh, I don't like this or that or the other thing. You just go back to the plus up here in the corner, and you pick a different template. I'm gonna pick Madeline now. And it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna add this to this template, which would be append new layout, or do you wanna replace the existing layout? And that's what we wanna do. So we're gonna click replace existing layout, we're gonna click okay, and now we're gonna have that new layout here. And boom, there you go. Featured properties, we've got putting you at ease, you know, kind of a little bio here, and then we've got the, the home search. Now, just because you pick a template does not mean you have to stick exactly to this template. Maybe I think, oh, I love the search right here. I like the image. Um, I like the bio thing here. But before we get to the featured properties, I want one of my videos to be there. So then I'm going to just click that plus, 
And basically what, what my point here is, is that you can take a template and then mold that the way you want. The way that I would think about a template is I would think of it as a starting point. You can take that starting point and sort of leave it as is, or you can uh, take that starting point and add more to it, remove certain things from it, whatever you want your page to look like. So uh, does anybody have any questions about the templates part real quick? I'm going to take a sip of water. If you guys have any questions, please write them in the chat regarding templates specifically. Okay, so um, again, if, I'm, if you haven't written that in yet, that's totally fine. Feel free to you know, continue to write it in. Um, what I want to move on to now is editing this information. Before we talk about adding new parts to the template, I want to show us how to um, edit some of this stuff. It's pretty straightforward in terms of what you have to click, but it does get a little bit clunky um, differentiating. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we're looking at this image right here. Let's say find your next home. Okay, cool. I, I don't like that text. I want to add something else. All I'm going to do is click on that text and you'll see uh, I have the ability to edit this header right here. So I'm going to take find your next home and I'm going to say guiding you, whoops, guiding you home since, you know, uh, 1923, something like that. Or I'm going to say, maybe we just say here to guide you home. All I'm going to do then is I'm going to click save and boom, I've updated my text. Uh, if I click this little wrench, you see this little wrench on the bar here, that's also going to bring me to the same exact spot. So again, they do try to make this as easy as possible for you. Uh, I can, if you, by the way, just so you guys can see, I was on general up here. If I click on style, I, do, I am able to edit the font. So let's say I'm just gonna pick Georgia. I, I kind of like Georgia font. It's, it's nice, it's a little regal. It's not too um, uh, fancy, but it's not too simple. I like Georgia. So I'm gonna pick Georgia. And I'm also gonna make it normal. I kind of want it to be a little bit um, bolder. So I'm gonna, you can choose, uh, choose between those. Uh, I can align it left, right, or center. Looks a little weird to me if it's off to the left like that, so I'm going to center it there. Um, so again, you can see, again, they, they give you a lot of options that you can work on. You're not going to really need all of them. Color. What color do I want it to be? I'm going to show you guys a lot of things here that I don't uh, recommend. I don't think you need green text right here on your front page. I just want to show you how easy it is to change the color, okay? Um, Keep it white, you know, keep it as the easiest to read on that page. Let's go to, whoops, uh, let's go to down to, oh man, there we go. Make it white, get click out of that, and then I am going to make it, uh, whoops, I am going to make it a little bit bigger because as nice as the font is, I just, wanna, I just want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to take this bar and I'm going to drag it, and to me that looks better. That's more of a header. That's what I want to keep. So I'm going to do that. And then again, I'm just going to click save and boom, my site, my color is different or, you know, I got the white, I got it bigger. I got that font. Everything is the way I want it to be. We're going to scroll down. Actually, before we do that, this image back here, this brick uh, kind of interior building, maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. If you want to change that image, you'll see how when you hover over a certain section, watch how there is a blue frame that goes around the uh, section. So when I go here, you see that little blue frame. When I go here, you'll see this blue frame. When I scroll down, you'll see the blue frames as I hover over each section. And when I go to this big section up here, you'll see the blue, the, the blue frame around it. And up in the upper left corner, you'll see that wrench. So I'm gonna click that wrench again for this big section. And this is going to allow me to change the photo if I don't like this photo. So uh, as I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the photo. It's gonna have the, the, the um, brick building there, but I can upload or choose another image. So just for the sake of it, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click upload or choose image in 20 minutes when this loads, um, I can add a photo from my computer. Now, uh, the blue box is on the search bar, Don. Uh, that's a great question. As soon as I get that, do this, I'll, I'll go back to that part. Um, so basically you can add photos from your computer. They are saying right here, do you have the rights to this image? Is this an image you took? Is this an image that you have access to? Do not just go to Google and download a photo. 
and then the maximum file size is 10 megabytes. Now that probably won't be a problem, but if it is, reach out to your marketing group. We can resize an image for you and make it smaller. So I actually was, uh, I had a call, like I said, with a couple of our awesome St. Croix agents and they sent me some photos this morning. Um, that's a nice one. Let me see if I can find, where did I put the, oh, they're on my desktop. So I'm gonna take, find a photo, uh, Powers photos, here they are. Uh, let's say, which one do I like? The, yeah, here we go. I like this image. It's only 1.2 megabytes. I'm just gonna drag it over here where it says drop files and you can see it's gonna load. Making it uh, good. I'm gonna click right here, insert into post. Hopefully it takes. And now let's watch this. We're gonna click save. It's gonna take a minute. Boom. Oh man, that looks awesome. I would love to be there right now. Now, one thing to keep in mind though with these photos, guys, not every photo is going to look good everywhere you wanna put them. What I mean by that is that the busier a photo is, more colors, more buildings, more people, the busier a photo, the more it is going to draw my attention away from the text, away from the search bar. So just make sure that whatever photo you have, after you put it in, make sure it looks good. Um, I know that might sound kind of self-explanatory, but it's important. So uh, I, there's one thing I'm looking for here to see if I can uh, show us something but it doesn't look like that's gonna be an option. So that's, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, do, 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 do width, we want that, that's good. Um, again, a lot of these options are not anything you're really gonna to need to um, worry about. Uh, do, 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 do. If I do photo, let's try this. Attachment scale, fill, um, overlay type color. Yeah, see my point, I'm already doing too much. Let's just click cancel, go back to that photo. Now, Don was asking about these uh, little bars, these little boxes right here. These are just called spacers, Don. So they're basically, if I were to rem to move one of them, which I'm actually not gonna do, this bar would kind of fill out a little bit more. You can see how that spacer kind of, um, as I move these spacers, the bar gets bigger or smaller. Um, I wanna make sure I can undo what I just did. I forgot how to do that, maybe we'll find that later. Um, publish layout, duplicate, uh, do, 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 do. maybe there isn't an undo. So I'm still, obviously, as you guys can tell, learning a little bit um, as we go. Um, so basically, that's what those spacers do. They just kind of make it uh, a little bit, uh, they, they kind of crunch something a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Um, I think, let me see if this is the separator here that I am looking for. I'll do a separator, add it right there. Gonna click save and boom I have another separate save that separator that I'm gonna kind of move a little bit so it looks a little bit centered and so this is where I start to say um, the templates do things well so you can see as even as I've started to kind of screw around here um, the 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 uh, uh, template had it really really well configured before I came in and started screwing stuff up um, so I do really recommend uh, staying with some of that stuff um, let me see if I can find just a spacer. Let me see if I can just search for it. Spacer slash gap. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take that spacer slash gap, put it right here, and now we got it kind of evened out again. So uh, that's what those boxes are down. Hope that makes sense, having the, having the spacers there. Um, we're going to go down to the next part, and it's sort of the same thing here, guys, where basically for the text, if you want to change putting you at ease, I can just click on that. I'm going to change that heading to say, get to know me, click save. And then I'm gonna take this text here, this kind of uh, Latin, not kind of, this definite Latin, <laughs> and I'm just gonna paste in my bio. I'm gonna really quickly copy and paste this. Don't worry about you know, getting that. And I'm just gonna go here, highlight it all, delete it, and then I'm gonna put um, my info there. And I think, oh, that's a little too spaced out. So I'm just gonna delete the spaces um, between those paragraphs so it looks a little bit better. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the style, because like I said earlier, I like that Georgia font. So I'm going to go to font, I'm going to change it from default, and I'm going to go down to the font I want. Georgia, there it is, beautiful. Click save, and boom. Uh, same thing with the chair, okay? Hey, I like this chair, I'm going to keep it. Well, let's do, let's start to add on a little bit. Let's say I want another image next to this chair. I'm going to click on the plus, 
and I'm going to, under the standard modules, I'm going to click photo. Actually, I'm going to drag photo. And I'm going to drag it. And you can see, as I'm starting to drag it, I can drag this anywhere I want. Now, again, once you've put it somewhere, you can change it. You can move it. You can remove it. But just to make it easy, I'm going to put it right next to this chair because that's where I want it to go. Okay, what photo do you want, JD? I'm going to click select photo right here. And again, I can pull an image from my gallery that I have already uploaded. Or up here in the upper left, I can click upload photos and I can upload some of this stuff. So I can go from upload photos or media library. So I'm going to go to media library. I'm going to pick the picture of us and the dogs, click select photo, and it's going to show up right there. So I'm going to click save. So that's how you're able to add a second photo. Now, again, this starts to look a little crunched. We got this text here. We got the photos. Maybe I want to take this header uh, and I want to move it across the whole thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take where this header and you see where it has, has move. It's got the little icon. I'm going to take that and move it across the top here. And then I'm just going to click on this little wrench and I'm going to click on style for the, I believe it's under, where did it go? Font? Yes, font. And I'm going to align it center and boom. Now we've got the get to know me and it's across the top of this entire section. So I can change it to Georgia and take the size, make it a little bit bigger. So boom, now you got to know me. You've got a chair, you've got a picture, and you've got some text. So again, in order to do that, all I did was I hovered over this little uh, move icon right here. It's got the four arrows pointing in all the directions. I just hovered over that and then dragged it where I wanted it to go. Maybe I want this text to go under the photo. So again, I'm gonna click and drag it and move it down here. But now we've got the spacer here just click this X, bye-bye, spacer's gone. And then last but not least, you know what? I don't like this chair, I changed my mind. Who needs a chair on their page? Remove, and we've got the spacer there. Now we just remove the spacer, and boom. Now you've got a get to know me that looks different than the, the uh, original one did. So you guys have seen how as we go, we can edit these things. Um, as we get down here, Again, if we wanted to change that background image, we could. If we wanted to change this module, we could. Are there any questions? And, and also, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, if there are any questions, guys, please write them in right now. But I do want to make it clear again that every template that you use will be a little bit different. This one was actually pretty simple, right? It had this section, it had this section, and it had this one. But remember that any template you use you're gonna wanna go in and replace any of the stock information. The stock photos, not so much. This photo here, this brick, you might go, yeah, I like that brick. You can keep that there. But do you remember how there was all that Latin right here? You don't want someone to go to your page and see a bunch of stock text. So make sure that you have that, um, that text ready to be replaced or images to replace as well. Uh, let me click on the chat here. How do we add our own listings and featured properties? Great question, Heather. That's exactly where we were going next. How to add more modules. So I want to show you guys how to add more modules, and then I'll show you just uh, towards the end probably um, how you can also make a page for a specific property, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's say I like this get to know me here. I want that second. However, I want to add something before the featured properties. I want to add my properties. Let me show you how we're going to do that quick. We're gonna go back up here to the um, uh, plus sign. And I'm trying to remember where it is. Let me see if I can find it before I um, tell you guys incorrectly. Icons, widgets, there we go. Okay, so from, you know, we're gonna click the plus to get the menu back here. Now for the real estate specific uh, modules, the sections you want to add, you're gonna to wanna to see where it says um, standard modules. Click on that and then go to widgets. It's the third option here, widgets. And here's where you're gonna have a bunch of real estate based um, searches. You're gonna be able to do featured properties module, a links module, my brokerage logo, all of these things here you can do. If you're looking for a, uh, your properties, we're gonna click on featured properties module. And again, we're gonna drag that and I'm gonna put it right here in this new row. So. From here, 
I, now, boom, there it is. There are my featured properties. However, like we said, Heather, I want my listings. I want my listings to be here. Do you see where it says property list? I'm going to take where it says my office's listings, and I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to have all of these options right here. My active listings, my sold listings, featured properties, my office listings, etc. And we're going to go, I want my active listings. Now, JD is not an active agent, so there's not going to be anything there. But if you were to click on that, that's where your listings would appear, or your solds. So I'm going to just go back to my office's listings, just so we have an example. Um, so it, it's visually there. And then we also have, where you see here where it says featured properties, I can change that title, because it says title right there, and I can say my current listings. And you'll see that text populate right there in a moment. Boom, my current listings. So then I'm just going to click save. And now you've got your listings right there. It's going to take a second. It's going to be there. Boom, my listings. Uh, you could have also done that same thing here. You see how this featured properties tab was already there. You could have clicked this little widget right here, the, uh, the, the uh, wrench as we've been doing. And you'll have that same option. Right now it's defaulting to my office's listings, but then you could just pick another widget for, um, or sorry, another option for my actives, my solds. So uh, the other thing I wanna show you guys too, uh, in that same area, I'm gonna click add. You can also do your custom searches module. This is just like on my other templated page, right? Where I can drag this down right here. And I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna show us right now how to add a custom search. I'm gonna show you as if you've already added one. But you'll see I have a bunch of custom search options. Homes in Rockford, Grand Haven Luxury, Holland Luxury Homes. I'm gonna pick Holland Luxury Homes and then I'm gonna title that the same. I'm gonna say Holland, whoops, am I? luxury homes I'm just gonna click Save then and boom we're gonna wait for it here it is Holland Michigan luxury homes but hey you know what I want this above my current listings so what if I don't have any listings right now well we're just gonna go down here to where we have this move icon on the left over here and we're just gonna drag that section drag it right here and boom now we've got my luxury home search and then my current listings. Put the chat back up. Um, does that search draw from the complete MLS? Yes, so these searches, um, well, well, let me put it this way. The, these sites are connected to all, every MLS that Coldwell Banker Schmidt has uh, a relationship with, has any office in. So if uh, it, it will pull from your MLS any of the listings that you kind of um, connect to it. So for example, you know, this Holland Michigan luxury home search, that's a custom search that I created um, uh, earlier, a few weeks ago. All of the searches, that uh, all of the listings from that MLS will feed through this search. And if you do my office listings, it's the same thing. Now, it's not connected to searches in, you know, Indiana or Illinois or Georgia. I, it's only connected to our MLSs that we work with. So that's what, you know, I would recommend keeping it sort of local based um, for, for that. So, uh, so we've done a custom search. We've done a, uh, a featured properties listing. Um, yes, Rick, if you temporarily have no active listings, the box will probably, will just show empty. Sort of like mine was just showing a second ago where it just wouldn't show up. So if it said my active listings and you had none, it just wouldn't appear, which I personally think is better than having the title there with no listings. Cause if you had a title that said my active listings and then it was blank underneath, it might look a little bit, uh, a stranger. So uh, let's go back to this modules. Let's see what else we can add. We've got a bunch of options. We could do a neighborhood news widget. We could do the brokerage loco, logo, not loco, um, my contact details, the mortgage rate. So we have all these things here, but I actually wanna go back from this widgets and I wanna go back to the standard modules because I want to add a video. Sorry, the chat's blown up, which is great. Um, yes, Denise, you can, um, make the top image not as wide, the search here. Now I will, uh, that, that actually brings a good point, Denise. Um, this picture right here will change depending on the size of the user's screen. So as I uh, kind of scoot it in, you'll see the image size does change a little bit. You can see a little bit more of it. As I zoom out, or as I widen my, my window, you can see it kind of zooming in a bit. Now, I would personally recommend that you 
let leave this as widescreen like this because it looks really good on just about not just about on every device so i do think that this is the best option however if you do want to change it you can you know go to those spacers and then you can just add a spacer um, right next to it i think my internet's starting to kind of was bug out a little bit so you can't you could add a spacer right there or you could just create a brand new part from scratch and not have this there um, at all so I know that was a bit of a convoluted answer because my, my internet, again, is dipping in and out. But you can uh, rem make it a little less widescreen. However, I would recommend keeping it like this because it does look really good on all devices. Um, okay, so we want to add a video. So there has been some confusion about adding videos to a Moxie site. And I do apologize for that. And I will say that we have been learning more as we go with with these video options so we were initially told certain information that turned out to not be as accurate as they they had thought um, they are working on it from a tech standpoint but the short version is that right now in order to add a video to your moxie site you do need to have it on youtube now uh, if you go to schmidtvideoclassroom.com i have a, t a, a newer tutorial on how to add a video to youtube um, how to create a YouTube channel if you don't even have one, but we do need uh, to you do need to have a YouTube video in order to add it to Moxie. It doesn't matter the length, it doesn't matter how uh, HD it is, it just needs to be on YouTube. So I want to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this templated page. I'm going to go to YouTube.com, and I'm just going to pick a uh, video. Um, I don't know. Let's just go to Coldwell Banker Schmidt Family of Companies see if I can find one of our company videos, maybe like our luxury one. Yeah. Let's say I wanted this We Are Luxury video here. If you guys haven't seen it before, it's a cool, great video. So this is the video that we're going to put in. We've decided, okay, in order to do that, we have to go up to the plus in the corner and we have to pick the video module right here. We're going to drag that over. And I want it to be right here, right before my get to know me. I'm going to put it boom, right across the top. This is where things um, might get a little confusing, so pay attention to this part. You'll see for video type, it says embed. That's very important for how we pull this video over, because what that means is that we can't just copy and paste the YouTube link. It's still pretty simple, but if you copy paste the YouTube link, it's probably not going to work. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to this YouTube video, and instead of clicking copy, instead of pasting that over there, we're going to click on share down here along this bottom bar. We are luxury, cold bankers, we companies, likes, downs, share. Now, you'll notice that word that we were looking at earlier was embed. Well, guess what? Right here it says embed, it's the very first option. So we're gonna click that embed option and this is what your screen should show you. You should have a bunch of text over here. Um, it's basically code that, that will embed the video into your page. So you can either, you know, kind of highlight it all and right click and copy or lower right hand corner, you can see where it says copy and just click copy. Boom, click copy. We're gonna go back to our page and we're gonna click on this box and we're literally just gonna right click and paste it all in. You'll see it all come over, all that weird stuff. And hey, look at that. There it is. We've got our video right there. Uh, there really isn't any other uh, um, stuff to worry about in this section. Just gonna make those margins a little smaller. Um, so really, as soon as you have that video in there, you just want to click save and there it is. Now I've got that video right there. So just again, to show you guys this video, uh, to go over those steps and remember this will be recorded and it will be uploaded, um, to schmidtvideoclassroom.com. You're going to want to find, you're going to click on the plus here and you're going to want to bring a video module onto your page. So I'm going to do it again. It doesn't matter where I'm dropping it right now. I'm just going to drop that module. And again, it says embed. So we need something. We, we can't just copy and paste the normal YouTube video. We need the embed code. So I'm going to go to the video. It has to be on YouTube. I, I believe Vimeo is also an option if that's one that uh, you'd rather use. Um, I would recommend video or sorry, I'd recommend YouTube. It's easier. It's simple. Um, and once you go to that YouTube video, whether it's a brand video or maybe let's, let's do this actually, let's do Coldwell Banker guiding you home. Let's say you want that new guiding you home commercial, that, that amazing tearjerker of a commercial. I want this on my main page instead. 
I'm going to go to that video and I'm just going to pause it. All right, I'm going to click share down here along this bottom row, share. And then after I click share, I'm going to click embed. It's this first icon right next to Facebook. I'm going to click embed. This text right here is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to uh, click copy in the lower right corner, C-O-P-Y, copy. I'm going to go back to my page and I'm going to paste that text into this box right here. And boom, there it is. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> so I'm going to click save and now my video is there. And I'm going to remove the second one. I don't want two videos right now. I just want the guiding you home. So I'm just going to click that X. And I'm going to click delete. Okay. So I've got guiding you home there. So, uh, just for the sake of time, I am going to start to bring us to the last section of this, um, which is kind of moving away from where we are right now. But I do want to tell you guys, there are so many options up here. If I click that plus, look at all these options. We can have text. You can have a photo gallery. You can add a testimonial section. Uh, if you go back from the standard modules again and you click on uh, the widgets, look at all these widgets, property searches, mortgage rates, um, the neighborhood news. You have a lot of options. You can customize this really as much as you want. And this starts to make this look less like a, a templated page, or sorry, a, um, yeah, a, a kind of template cookie cutter page and more like your website. Not like, a, not like a profile page, that's what I was looking for. Not a profile page, your website. So play around, see what options you have here. Um, pick a template you like uh, and, and you know, kind of get to work working on it. You can add audio. Again, if I take audio, I can add that right here. And I can play a link from iTunes, from Spotify, wherever uh, music is, is playable or sold from. But I'm not going to do that for, for this. So let's say we've spent some time. And again, like I've said this before, um, there is no, you can always go back and edit some of this stuff. Do not worry about not being able to uh, change things down the road. All of this stuff is editable, okay? So there's no, there's no, oops, I'm, I'm SOL on this. Whoops. There we go. I kind of um, brought that in a little bit closer. So as I say, I'm good. You know what, JD? This page looks great. Um, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm done. Well, we're going to click done up here in the upper right hand corner. You'll see right above my contact info. It says done. And I'm going to click publish. If you're not done with it, if you want to go back to work on it, you can save it as a draft. But I'm going to click publish because I want to be um, uh, done with this. How is it that this page is now our page? I'm not sure I understand that question, Heather. Could you please uh, rephrase that a little bit? Um, but I, I'm going to, uh, this page is one that I've created on, on my website. So it's my page. Um, uh, yeah, you might want to connect with me after that. I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. Um, the URL is the same, you know, if you know, uh, so that, so LockwoodClark.com. Um, okay, so let's, I'm going to slow it down because we're getting a couple questions coming. Uh, we previously redirected when, you know, when we, when we partnered with Moxie, we had them redirect all of the old links from old CB Great Lakes to the new links on the new CB Great Lakes. Same with Ohio, same with Florida. So if you had a domain like Lockwood Clark that was previously going to um, you know, your old CB Great Lakes site, that should have automatically gone to the new one as well. We did that so that there were no broken links. So if you had marketing out there with Lockwood Clark, sorry, LockwoodClark.com, uh, and th that that marketing wasn't useless, right? So that people could still go there. So we took care of that um, from from our end, and so now you can go in on, on the on the Moxie side. Uh, Cindy asks, "What is the protocol to get your videos on YouTube?" Um, the protocol is go to YouTube.com and upload your videos. So um, you literally just go to YouTube.com, and again, um, if you go to SchmidtVideoClassroom.com, there is a video specifically how to create a YouTube channel, how to upload your videos. But it really is as simple as once you're logged in, you click this upper right corner, you see where it says create a video and more, this little icon. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click upload video. And then I'm gonna find the file on my computer. You need that video file. I'm just gonna put it right there. I don't know if I have any uh, handy. I have, this isn't gonna be a good video. And I know that I'm speeding through this. I'm just doing that for time. Like I said, there's a more in-depth video on the Schmidt Video Classroom um, uh, YouTube channel. 
Um, you can title it whatever, you know, you can say, um, get to know me, JD Weldvogel, comma, realtor. If it's a property, you could do the um, title of that video, or sorry, sorry the, the address property. Um, this is a new thing, just uh, as a side note, this whole, is this made for kids required? This is a new requirement from YouTube. You have to signify, is this video uh, for children or not, uh, basically. Um, I don't know any reason why any of our real estate videos would be, so just click no right there. Uh, and then you could, you know, you'll have your link as soon as it's uploaded. So that's how you would upload a video to YouTube. Um, so, uh, yeah, check. I mean, they do make it pretty straightforward as well. They want it to be easy for you. I'm going to delete that because we do not want that uh, on that channel. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's free. Uh, you, it doesn't cost anything. You've got a Gmail account if you're using your CB Great Lakes. Um, if you don't, you know, it's a, you, you can use a regular Gmail account to, to do a YouTube channel. It's really, really uh, free, really pretty simple. So um, we're going to click Done. And we're going to click publish because I'm, I'm done with this page. And then from here, we're going to click back. If you look at this top bar up here, we're going to click on admin home. Okay. So right now, all we've done is create that page. Okay. So if we go back to site pages, you see where it says all pages, we're going to click on site pages. And if I scroll to the bottom, um, you'll see it right here, training page one. So now, if I go to my website, and I'm going to go to, again to that URL, jd-waldvogel, um, we'll see it across the top bar up here. There it is, training page one. And if I click on that, it's going to take us to that page. Here it is. But we might be thinking, okay, that page is great, but I want that to be my main page, like we talked about. I want this to be when people go to my page, the first thing they see is this page. I don't want it on the navigation bar. I want it to be its own thing. Uh, this is the last thing we're going to go over, so I want to show you guys how to do this quick. You see where it says home page right here on this left-hand sidebar? Actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong about it. See where it says appearance right here on this left-hand sidebar? Uh, if I hover over appearance, homepage layout is the first option. Let's click on homepage layout. And it's going to ask me, okay, we've done, you know, we've done this with a template before. Hey, what is what homepage do you want? Do you want to do the search focus, the agent focus, or do you want your homepage to be a custom page? That's what we want to click. So I'm going to click custom page. You see how it's highlighted in blue? And then where it says select, it's going to say which custom page do you want to use? And you can see I've got a couple of the uh, options here. And I'm going to click training page one. That's the page that I want. Then I'm just going to click publish. And so now I basically told them I want that page to be my custom page. So now watch this. When I go back to my name, Jade, you know, my website, just the main page right here. This is where it's taking us. Boom. Right there. This is now the front page of my website. And again, all I had to do to do that was I went to appearance and I clicked on custom for the homepage layout instead. And then I clicked publish. Now, one, one note on that, and this is one of those things where I wanted to show you guys this before you do it yourselves. If you do that, you'll notice it still says um, along this, uh, actually, let me show you right here. You see right here, it's still called training page one because that's what I called it. So I would want to go back and change the name of that page because I don't want people to go to my website and then see training page one as the title. So I'd want to go back to um, my pages, you know, site pages, and then click all pages. And where I have it, and you can see now it says training page one parentheses home page. I'm going to click edit on that page and I'm going to change that title. And I'm just going to say, you know, for that top, I'm just going to say JD Waldvogel, if I could spell my own name right, Realtor. And then I'm just going to click uh, Update. You can see that on the, on the, uh, the right-hand side over here. I'm going to click Update. And voila. Now, when I reload my website, it should say, if I did it right, JD Waldvogel, Realtor. So it just, that makes a little bit more sense than, um, you know, uh, having it, uh, uh, say, training one. Got some questions coming in.
how did I name the custom page? Uh, that's what I, one of the things I was just showing us is so that when I was, uh, you know, I when I first created the custom page, when I clicked add new page, I put something right here in this box. But then when I wanted to change it, just to go through it again, um, if I click on site pages and then click on all pages, I can go down to that custom page, uh, which was right here. And I can click edit, this little blue edit button, and then I can uh, edit that to um, have whatever title I want. Uh, Denise was saying, you know, how can we edit the current search focused homepage or do I have to customize it and create a new one? You totally can, Denise. That's one of the things I showed us actually before we got into the custom pages part. You see where it says homepage right here, right on the left hand side and instead of site pages. If I click on homepage, this is where I can edit that. Um, oh, actually, no, I can't know because I, I switched it over. So what I would have to do is go back to appearance on the homepage layout go back to search focused the template and then click publish like I wanted it to or like I like it originally was and then if I click on a uh, home page right here on the left see our home page again this is where I can edit that home page now you can edit the information here but you can't really edit the order of anything so my, my website's probably really mad at me for how much I'm changing it right now um, but when I go back you can see it's already updated to that um, search focused format right so like I said I can edit the order or the the stuff that I have here you know I can remove my custom search I can change my video I can change my blog right here but I can't change the, the formatting and the layout the way I can with a custom page so the short way to answer your question is for this home page, you can edit the information, but not the layout. Whereas with page builder, it's definitely a little bit heavier, but you can edit anything that you want to edit about that page. Um, so that is going to uh, bring me to the end guys. That's all that I had um, kind of, uh, plan for this, please, uh, you know, I'll give us a quick 60 seconds to wrap up with any questions. Uh, of course, if you built a page and you're like, hey, JD, can I send this to you to take a look at? Of course you can. Send me a page that, that you've created if you want some advice on it. Um, uh, this video, I'm going to finish the recording as soon as we're done and re-upload it to schmidtvideoclassroom.com. It'll be under the Moxie section. You can re-watch it. Um, again, I... I love this feature because if you decide that you do want to create a custom page, you can do it. If you decide you don't want to, you don't have to. It's totally up to you with what you want. And that's what I really do like about these Moxie websites is that you can have what you want from it. Um, so uh, I think we're going to call it a day, guys. Thank you so much for, for your time. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're staying busy. Remember, this is a great time to work on these things. If you saw the email that went out um, right uh before uh, this this webinar, like minutes before this webinar started, um, we had a, a email go out about how to update 10 websites that you might have a profile on. Facebook, uh, coldwellbanker.com, Moxie, all of that stuff. Check out that email. You know, this is a great time to work on your business uh, and get it prepped for when, you know, as if you're in Michigan, when you're able to go out to listings again. Um, but of course, as things die down, where you can finally go back out and start securing more and more listings. Um, I am going to one last time at the end here show you guys how to add that video and then I'm going to bounce off. So uh, I'm just going to click on this one, everyone you sent over, Alessandra. So hello, Alessandra just got a beautiful uh, video here. So again, if you wanted to add this to that custom page, uh, you'd have it up on the page, website. Now, I don't have the website part up, but I just want to show you again. It's not this YouTube link that you're looking for here. If you click on this share button right here, Instead of copying this, we're not copying this yet, we're clicking embed, the very first big option, embed. And then you should see the screen change like this format. And then I'm just gonna copy in the corner down here, lower right, I'm gonna click copy. And then you're just gonna paste it into the website uh, in that section when you dragged over the video module. Um, again, if that, you know if you wanna follow the steps, this video is gonna be up probably within the next hour, take a look at it. Um, and again, thank you guys so much, have a great, rest of your week. If you need anything, reach out and I will see you all next time. Bye now.